So tell us your name and what you do and who you are. I'm Andrea Hoxley. I actually work in an independent research group doing VR video research and things like four-dimensional virtual reality games like Hypernom, which I talked about earlier in the conference. Um, I also do a lot of mathematical art. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your in sort of first involvement with Martin, how you heard about him and his work and, and about the gathering? So I think probably my first involvement with Martin was a long time ago when I was a kid and I didn't know who he was or like I didn't really connect like to Martin Gardner as a thing. It's just like these were the kinds of things that interested in me. As I got older, I just sort of found people with similar interests and like eventually like, you know, Martin Gardner started popping up from other people who were like, oh yeah, that was from Martin Gardner. I was like, oh, it was? I read it somewhere. I don't remember where. So it was sort of like a very slow seeping in of like, where did this come from? Especially, I think, because I'm younger mm -hmm. than a lot of the people who read his stuff when it first came out. So he wasn't really the figure. It was like the stuff that was just in like recreational math and puzzles that was in the world. And like when you start interacting with other people who've already done it, who are maybe older, that's when I started getting Martin Gardner as a name that was connected to these things at all. Right. Um, and it I'm wasn't in my original experience. I'm the same generation, I believe, as you. Yeah. So it, it sort of seems like this stuff has just like been around forever. Yeah, it's kind of how it feels. As this stuff that, uh, you know, it's just so prolific and uh, almost addictive in a way that it mm -hmm. just seems like, oh, this is just math that's always been around. So yeah. Prior to coming to things like this or like meeting people from an older generation, it wasn't like, oh, these are all connected to some guy and like this used to like not even be a thing people did. It's, that wasn't part of where I grew up. So how did you find out about the gathering initially and in, in sort of your, mm -hmm. when was the, the first one that you came to? Do you remember? Uh, the first one I came to was four years ago and I had known about it before then because I knew people who went. I reached this point where I was like, I would like to be doing my hobbies more. And so I was like, this is it. This year I'm going to go to the Gathering for Gardener that I keep hearing about. And it happened to be the case also that I had a whole bunch of friends who either went regularly or had been going for some time. So you mentioned recreational mathematics. It's one of my favorite things that I know little about that I come here and find out a lot about. But I always try to explain to people what recreational mathematics is, because I think for most non-mathematicians and puzzlers that those two words like they can't put them together like wait these aren't the same so do you have uh, examples that you use to explain to people who have no idea what you're talking about to a large extent recreational math is doing something with math that is purely for fun and you can use it to explain math and it's not necessarily novel in the sense that it's expanding the horizons of math and it's not something that's really boring like sitting there and doing a page of multiplication problems but it's something that takes math and looks at it in a more fun way. I think a good example is uh, Fibonacci Lemonade, which yeah. you talked about yesterday. Yeah, so, right. Of, you know, basically taking proportions and Fibonacci. And it's a great way to sort of explain and understand what Fibonacci is to people that might not know it or it's mm -hmm. a novel use of it. Fibonacci Lemonade is also one of those projects that kind of hits this like sweet spot. Like sometimes you just like you have an idea and it's just like just like this is the right thing. And Fibonacci Lemonade was definitely one of those where I was sitting there thinking about mathematical food. And it's, it somehow is like fun enough that you can do it easily. It touches math that's really approachable. Like everyone's heard the Fibonacci sequence. And, but it's also really fun and approachable. And then you get to drink the results afterwards. So even if you hate math, you can't hate lemonade. Yeah, lemonade, yeah. Sort of anchoring stuff with anxiety to stuff with a lot of fun so that mm -hmm. we can kind of get people to think about math in a, in a happy way, which is, I think, one of the be beautiful things about Gathering for Gardener is if y you don't know anything about math or you think that you don't like math and you were to happen to come to the gathering, you realize the sort of beauty that you see around you in different sculptures and things that people are working on, there's this underlying math in all of it and being able to sort of take these beautiful things and understand them and recreate them in different ways. I think it's fun. I, I like dabbling in like little bits of math, which in some sense is also what recreational math is. It's just sort of the like, you know, dabbling in things and like learning things for the fun of it, but not necessarily for trying to advance any kind of math agenda. Not that recreational math can't sometimes advance math agendas, but um, it's more often because something is interesting and fun. So finally, do you have any just favorite memories of, in regards to sort of Martin, anything that 
you were inspired by from him or just anything at the gathering that, that happened? or Outside of this, I live in the Bay Area, and there's a whole crowd of people who come to a gathering for Gardner in the Bay Area, and we sometimes meet up and do puzzle things. And uh, since this is only once every two years, it's, it's kind of like, you know, I don't want to go meet, do these things again. So right. um, some of my favorite memories are like meeting at people's houses who have like amazing puzzle collections in their houses, which obviously they can't bring here, and, you know, playing with all of the puzzles. Um, and I also find it very inspiring to see what everyone else is doing and being like, oh, I could do that, or that's really cool, I want to go see that. Or how can I like make something really awesome to share with all these people next time so that they they also think that I'm awesome and I don't just have to go around thinking everyone else is awesome and I'm kind of boring. Right. I think there is sort of everyone goes through a little bit of imposter syndrome just because there's so many different disciplines that we all have something that's part of the gathering that we don't know yeah. very much about and then something that we know a whole lot about. So mm -hmm. we're, we're sort of all in that group together. And I think that's one of the nice things about Gathering for Gardener is like, going to see things that are really cool that would not be in my usual conferences that I go to because they're outside my realm of expertise. And a lot of times you find yourself sort of stuck going to things that are what you're an expert on and you don't learn as much sometimes from those things and you don't, um, there's a sort of this idea that interdisciplinary work is the most, can often be the most fruitful because you're mixing with different things and you can be missing something really cool that's happening next door and Gathering has a big enough group of people from all over that you don't see that as much. Yeah, I agree. And that's why, that's why we're all here.